Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing uh, making smart money moves. And we have Temi Tokwe and Tosi um, with us. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Your Africa One with the hashtag Ways. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Sansi. Yeah. I had I saw you jotting down to us. I was jotting. Yeah, I mean, so I loved what Tosin said about decluttering. I never thought about their that mastery and learning new skills. Yeah, because the old skill you have, it, it's obviously not going to be relevant anymore. Yeah, because I never thought about decluttering at this point. But you know, if you want to declutter, because I would like to ask her that question. If you want to declutter, what happens with um, at this point where people don't have money? Won't you be selling at a loss? You know, it's, if, you it's, are, it's, if you're going to declutter, probably stuff you don't need anymore, wouldn't you be selling it at a loss? Obviously, you would be selling it at a loss. But the bigger question is who, for instance, I have a designer bag that I maybe bought um, maybe 50 something thousand there. Right. And now I want to sell it. OK, perhaps I'm selling it at 25,000 there, which is a huge loss. But who do you think is going to buy a bag for 25,000 there when people are trying to get time. food, right? And then the people within who can afford it, they almost they already have the bag. Mm -hmm. So what are we what are we saying here? But I'm I'm also uh, curious and I think um perhaps this goes out to Temi particularly, like the average man, obviously when we want to invest, we are thinking um millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of naira. So there is this sect of people, the average man, you have your salary you're not exactly hungry, but you're not wealthy. And so they want to invest. What are possible things they could invest in? Mm. That would be the question that we're going to ask um, Tim because they'll, they'll, be, they'll be with us shortly. Okay. Uh, but I, I also um, jotted the intangible assets from, mm. um, from Tosin. Tosin. Talking about intangible assets. So my problem with that is that there is no day you go online. This person is doing one Zoom meeting. One person is doing everybody one Instagram is on meeting. Instagram so all of a sudden, everybody have become experts in different fields. It's really, it's like, really So tiring. at some point now, it's tiring for me. The only, the only people I join their Instagram live or I join, mm. it is people that I already know. Like they ex we, they have have a, track we have a we have a Not even yeah. that we have a relationship. In the past, it means that I have signed up on their trainings before and all of that. Mm -hmm. I don't just join anyhow because everybody is selling at this time. So if everybody is selling at this time, don't you think it's a big mistake for you to think you want to now start investing in intangible assets at this point? So for me, I just feel like there is hunger, you know? Sure. Yeah. You know, there's hunger. So what, what more... I mean, right now, I don't want to learn anything new. I just want to make money. So but there are a have... couple of people with brilliant ideas. Yeah. For instance, I'll tell you, I knew a particular stylist. Obviously, people with natural hair. Um, last week, I had my natural hair on. Today, I had to go back to braids and then wig it because I... I Dealing with natural hair is a lot of stress. So a lot of there stress. are a couple of people who would go online and say, if you're having challenges with deep conditioning or doing all this, I can teach you, pay 3,000 naira for, for your class. Or yes. Because hmm. on the average, when you go for a what for 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 a deep to deep condition your hair, this is just an example. Um, but I think it's 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 the actual price. It's like four thousand or five thousand with the whole treatment and all that. But you 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 pay three thousand naira and you get the knowledge, and the knowledge stays with you. So stays I stays with you yeah. forever. I think we have Temi Tokwe and um, Tosin back on uh, online. So Temi Tokwe, if you can hear me, because I hear you say invest in me. Me, I want to invest, but I don't have the money yet. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Two ways. You're going to tell me how I can become a millionaire in the so, next six so months. Yes, That's invest, number one. Um, so when I when I eventually become now. that millionaire, to, uh, to me, can you hear me? So two things yes, I want I to ask you. I want to become a millionaire in the next six months. That's number one. <laughs> then when I eventually become a millionaire in the next six months, time. what do I need? What are the time. least um, <laughs> risky investments to make at this time? The investments mm -hmm. that are least risky. Right. So I like the fact that you've said um, least risky. I like that. Um, the truth is the best way to approach your investments, right? It's good to go with, you know, a portfolio mindset. You know, I, I try to tell people to desist from that siloed mentality to invest in. Oh, everybody's buying dollars now. Oh, I want to buy. They say dollar will appreciate you. Go and buy Okay. Uh, everybody says that Swiss gold is the thing to go. I want to buy. I want to buy commodities. You go and buy. You know, it doesn't work that way. First of all, um, 
you were saying at the beginning that you don't have a lot of money. You can start small. This, um, the fact that we don't have a lot of money, the fact that resources are limited, it's the very premise that the entire concept of personal finance planning is, 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 is based on. Your resources will never be enough. Dangote is still looking for money. Bernard Boy told us, remember, right? So whatever level you are at, your money will never be enough, but you have to be very disciplined about how you handle your personal finance. Again, when you have one million naira in the bank, the way you treat that one million is the way you treat it when you have hundred million on the bank. You don't you don't suddenly start to know how to manage your money when you become wealthy. You become wealthy, you become a millionaire, as you said, when you start managing your money well. So to your question of the kind of investments you need to do right now, remember we're just um, coming out of tough times probably heading into another recession. Um, as the equity market bottomed out yet, we don't know. But right now, what you invest in should depend on your circumstance. So what works for Uwa will not work for Sanzi. That's, that's how it is, right? It depends on your age, your risk profile, your circumstance. So if you have, for example, two ladies, one is 20, right? And she's not married. The other one is 40 years old and she's got two kids, right? The 20-year-old has all the time in the world to play in the equity market. Remember, with the equity market, you can gain capital appreciation. Like 1 million can become 100 million in the equity market buying stock. But it's a waiting game. It's a long-term play. So she has all the time in the world to do that. The 40-year-old woman who's got two children, probably in lower secondary school, who will be going into the university in five years, and she has to pay school fees in five years, she cannot afford to put all her money in the equity market. Again, the market, you have a down market, like what we're seeing, you know, um, foreign investors are leaving, everything is crashing. You have to hold. You buy to hold. In the equity market, you're in the money when you're selling what everybody else is buying. You buy and hold it until such a time that people want to buy and they pay you a premium for that. And you have to have portfolio diversification when you have money to invest and you are located in bits to different asset classes. You have a diversified portfolio. That's what helps you ride out recessions. That's how you're able to insulate your investments to make sure that even when a recession happens and the equity market isn't doing well, well, the fixed income market will be doing well and everything. Right now, I would say it's best to stay liquid Cash is king right now. Um, there will be opportunities in future. And when I say cash, I don't mean like literal cash. I mean like treasury bills. Um, it's risky. It, it, it's risk-free, right? You might say that the yield isn't that great right now. But again, your money is safe. It's yeah. fixed income. It's your sleep well money. The day you are making that investment, you know how much. In fact, you get your interest up front. Right. So with fixed income, um, you get capital preservation. You don't lose your money. You can put money in high yielding savings accounts. You can invest in mutual funds. You can even buy some mutual fund. You can do like a USD one and do like a Naira one, have a mix of the two. That way you're even protected against devaluation, against the downside risk for devaluation. So it's not a one cap fits all approach, right? What would work best for UI is different from Sandy. And you don't, don't be shy to engage the experts. Ask questions. What's the best thing for me? But in everything you do, your capital preservation is very key. You're not looking to lose any money, right? So desist from investment scams please i beg you uh, i mean people are going to get that very creative so that's <laughs> online trading <laughs> yeah yes. okay yeah. so let me come the to economy, the economy is, is shrinking people will get creative and come at you absolutely and tell you if you invest in this i'll give you a 45 percent return in 30 and days that's what's the underlying that's a for big the person life. to pay you 45%, he's probably earning 50. What is that investment that will make anybody earn 50 Absolutely. in 60 days? Do you see? So treasury bills are the way to go. But I mean, ask questions, look at your own particular situation, your circumstance, and use that to, you know, build a portfolio that works for you, awesome. basically. Okay, so let me come back to Tosi. Um, Tosi, if you can hear me. You mentioned yes, intangible, intangible assets. I want to take you on that. Because um, so what I've seen lately now with the lockdown and the COVID-19, everybody has become experts on, on, on Instagram. So everybody is now, you know, going, trying to sell one this, one, one training, one that, one that. Masterclass. Or, masterclass and all of that. So I feel that it is becoming tiring to see, you know. So how, if you say that I should invest in intangible assets, how do I go about it? If my field, for instance, is part of all those saturated markets? 
Okay, so fantastic. The beautiful thing about an interjugal market is that you're spoiled for choice. So like we said previously, for instance, helping small businesses transition online, learning UX, um, UI, like learning coding. So there are many skills you can actually learn that are intangible. So skills will never, never, never go out of fashion. So there are so many skills to learn. Again, we're seeing a lot of technology skills come into play. We're seeing a lot of design. We're seeing a lot of skits. Now, there are so many skits out there. People doing short videos for their businesses, right? They don't have, look, they don't know how to do it. So can you put in something like that and be able to say, oh, We'll do five videos for you a month at X amount of price. Now, talking about training, guess what? It's so beautiful and so interesting how this thing works. When you don't need something or when you don't think something means something to you, you always feel like, oh, but there are so many people talking about this. But those that actually need it, they are paid for it. So if a lot of people are doing it, isn't that also making you ask a question? Is it possible for all of them to be going that direction? There's no demand for it. So people are actually purchasing the service. So I, I get you. I also get you because I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's so much. But for them to be doing it that much, definitely people are actually plugging in and actually buying that service. The other time I was reading a story about a woman that wrote an ebook. Guess what the title of that ebook was? Please guess how to make your child stop crying, something along those lines, and it was a bestseller. So wow. go out there, don't hold yourself back, look for the knowledge, tap into the knowledge. The knowledge market is actually very, very big, and people actually demand for it. So how do you set yourself aside? How do you show them that you actually have something to sell? Another way to also go about it, also a low entry point. So people are thinking, that, oh, what's the worst case? I lose five kids and I get to check out if this person is actually worth their onions and or not. So don't, don't rule it out, give it a shot. Okay. Okay. Well, um, yes, I'm, I'm all about investing because I think that's where I, I, I'm a lot more interested than the average Nigerian, especially people who have money. They're not wealthy, but they do have money. That's where they get stuff. So I would like to ask, what are the principles um, governing personal finance? general principles, maybe like bullet points or so. And also, would you advise that um, during this pandemic era that people invest long term or short term? Okay, so I'll, I'll, maybe I could take the last question and maybe um, um, she would take okay? the other one. So talking about should they invest short term or long term, there's something in accounting or there's something in personal finance called a cost averaging. So basically, what is a cost averaging? A cost averaging means that you're able to purchase what you can afford to purchase at that moment regularly, consistently. So I want to talk about a particular company. Okay, maybe I shouldn't call it any, but I'll just say a stock. Right, it was in January and that stock was 20 naira. In February, that same stock was 15 naira. In March, it went all the way to about 11 naira. If a person had been buying it consistently, they would have had an average price of about 15 naira. So somebody else would say, uh uh, why can't I wait for when it becomes a level? You can't time the market, you don't know when it bottoms out. So we always advise a cost averaging um, principle. To play the long-term game, do it gradually. So if I must eat, I must invest. So I understand that for a lot of people, um, they, they, they've seen a pay cut or they might have lost their jobs. But for some other people, guess what? They're actually saving more. So they're not going for Ashray B anymore. They're not using Uber rides to go for parties. They're saving more money that would ordinarily have gone other places. So if you are in that boat, these are things that you can actually do to gradually seize the opportunity and i think another thing to learn from this whole covid experience is this is what retirement is actually going to look like right mm -hmm. so you're asking yourself did i save for the rainy day did i prepare for the unforeseen circumstance so so many lessons to actually learn from this situation and how to then take your personal finance seriously and then plan for the future Okay, so Temi Tokwa will leave you to answer the first question. She asked about yeah. financing, personal principles. Fi the principles of personal financing. Right. Oh, yes, absolutely. And um, in addition to what Justin said, I love that Ashwabi example. Like, it's just the go to example because a lot of you'll be amazed at how much you spend on the non essential. So, for coffee lovers like me, that your favorite coffee, that your cappuccino, your latte that you order every morning at 2,000 naira in the office, that's 10,000 at the end of the month. At the end of the week, week. end of the month is 40,000. End of the year is what you do the math. Do you see? Even within an essential line item like food, food is essential. We all have to eat, right? But you can pack your own lunch when you're going to work. You can eat out twice a month, not every Friday. Do you see? So there are ways that you can optimize, you know, within that, oh, I don't have enough money. You'll be amazed. If you go through your finances, your bank statements with a fine tooth comb, you'll be amazed at how much you can spend. And, and that is the, you know, that's where, that's just everything that personal finance planning is about. So speaking to 
the principles. One, you need to plan. It's a plan, save, and invest approach. Um, plan, if you can earn more money. I love what Tosin said about the knowledge industry and how you can just try to multiple streams of income. It works every time. Um, if you can earn more money, fine. If you can't, you know, I mean, look for ways, but you need to know what's coming in every month, right? And you need to spend less. That's just the truth. That gives you more you know, a, a bigger buffer to play with. Okay. Next is the save. I talked about emergency savings the other time. You, we cannot overemphasize that. You need something to cushion the impact of uncertainties. It could be a pandemic, God forbid. It could be another down market. It could be anything. But you need to have an emergency fund that is very accessible in liquid assets. And then you need to invest. Portfolio diversification was fashionable before COVID-19. It's fashionable now. It's fashionable going forward. Invest, invest. That's how you make money. There's something called the law of compounding. That's how you must invest even the interest that you earn. And that's one of the ways to accelerate the growth of your investment capital. Invest in fixed income. Buy treasury bills. Buy some bonds. You can even diversify further within that asset class. Buy some euro bonds. Hold some in USD or Naira. And these things are not that sophisticated. You just need to talk to the experts and they'll put you through, you know. Invest in the equity markets. Remember, that's a long-term plan play it's a waiting game if you need to pay rent in one year don't put that money in the equity market it just might be a down market and the losses in the equity market do not crystallize until you actually have to sell right so you buy an old um you could do some real estate um if you're if you're familiar with commodities as well as well you put some of that in the in the mix again it depends on your risk profile it depends on your financial goals it depends on what you earn how much money you have and what you're looking to achieve wow thank you so much i think well, in two minutes can um money africa just give us some few tips in two minutes and tell me just one one minute each okay so give us some words tips, of encouragement <laughs> say that again please some words of encouragement <laughs> Some words of encouragement, um, you're your biggest asset because if anything goes down, the question is, can you come back up? So be very aggressive about investing in yourself. You're your biggest asset. Um, no matter, no, you would always turn a higher return than any other asset. So invest in yourself. You're your biggest asset. Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. So tell me to... <laughs> Okay, so um, you asked for one thing. Um, yes. I'll just say that, again, remember that uh, money in itself is not um, the end. I just want to make money. I just want to blow. No, it's just a means to an end. So it's, it's a tool that you can use to transition from, you know, the life that you have now to the life that you want to live. But then I just wanted to round it up by saying um, don't panic. Um, this has happened, but let's just be grateful. Let's be thankful for good health and life. We'll come out of this. And to all the frontline workers, you guys are the real MVPs. Thank you. God bless you. And I pray that we all come out on the other side. Amen. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Demita <laughs> Kwantosi. It was really, really fun having you guys. Mm -hmm. We hope to have you Thank guys you, live guys. in the studio. <laughs> Thank you. After the pandemic. <laughs> so, Sanzi, final words. I did, I did learn a lot. And personal finance... I I think I actually agree with uh, what they both said at the end, that at the end of the day, your biggest asset is yourself. So there's this saying that says you can take away everything, but leave me with my mind and I'll build it all over again. So this Perfect. is a fantastic time to invest in, in your yourself. mind. The money may not be there, but the mind Absolutely. that made it first will and replicate guess what? it again. In all honesty, trust me, there are a lot of free things happening online. I've been doing a lot of free courses, free training, free this. Yeah. Invest. If you really are looking for it, you'll find one free online. So please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very, very insightful conversation. Keep this conversation going on all our social media platforms at Waste you Africa or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Financial peace isn't the acquisition of stuff. It is learning to live on less than you make so you can give money back and have money to invest. You can't win until you do this. That's from Dave Ramsey. Yes. So yes. we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another thought-provoking conversation to your screen. Yes. Enjoy your evening. <laughs> Bye.